So I want to spend a little time talking about the energy efficiency ratio. It has the acronym EER. Uh, later, we'll talk about the SEER, S-E-E-R, but right now just the EER. It's defined as the cooling capacity divided by the power input. So the EER is equal to the Q dot out of the low temperature source that you're doing a refrigeration application, Q dot L, divided by W dot coming into the system. You take a look at this definition of the EER, just Q dot L over W dot N. Is there a similar definition that we've been exposed to for refrigeration system? Is this the same as the coefficient of performance for refrigeration system? Yeah. Clicker question. A, yes, it is the same. Or B, no, it's not. Is the COP equal to the EER? Everybody in? All right, let's go ahead and stop. They really are the same, okay? But uh, what's different, though, the EER has specified units. So the EER has the Q dot you can think of as being in BTU per hour. It's a rate of cooling divided by watts coming in. Okay, now somebody may say, well, I think it's a BTU amount of cooling per watt hour of electricity used, a amount of energy, like a kilowatt hour, that's how they sell electricity, a kilowatt hour, Ten, about 10 cents a kilowatt hour. But uh, that's the same. I mean, it's just this, either the, this way or that way is the same. So they're dimensionless, but it has particular units associated with the EER, which really don't convert down perfectly to be dimensionless. You need a unit conversion factor, such as this conversion factor, which is one that you may not have committed to memory. Sometimes I forget it. I need to look it up to refresh my memory. Or the reciprocal of this, which is 1 watt is 3.412 BTUs per hour. So these are unit conversions, just like 1 foot is equal to 12 inches. All right. Now, the EER is calculated under controlled environment. They have a warm outside a relatively cool and 50% relative humidity on the inside. And window air conditioning systems or room air conditioning systems typically have an ear 8 to 10. Maybe a little higher, but there you go. You ever seen a guide like this on the side of a window air conditioning unit? You're thinking about purchasing it. You may look at the label. Uh, they have them on refrigerators, freezers, they have them on hot water heaters, they have them on a lot of uh, uh, um, appliances. So the general template is, is this describes the type of appliance, this describes the manufacturer and the specifics of the one you're thinking of purchasing. This is a standard template by the government put out, EPA. Uh, this is some sort of estimate of cost. If you buy this, there's some assumptions in that. Compared to other models, you could buy a model that, giving the same amount of use, may only have an electric utility bill associated with that appliance of this much money, or it could be up to this. Uh, and then they have right here, what is this? This is energy efficiency ratios. So this is for a room air conditioner that has reverse cycle, meaning it can provide heating in the middle of the winter, and has louvered sides. Okay, if you scroll down, there's more to the thing, depending on utility rates and some stuff, but this is our 9.5 EER. So, if you have a window or a room air conditioner with the ear of 9.5, and we know that it's essentially the same as the definition of the COP, and you know these are the unit conversions that you need, what is the COP? What is the coefficient of performance for that same system? Is it 9.5, 2.8, 32, 8.5, or 3.2? You may need the calculator. Is everybody in? Okay, so let's just review the EER 
is the Q dot L divided by W dot N, but this has particular units. It has to be in BTU per hour, and this has to be in watts. But the COP refrigeration is Q dot L divided by W dot, but it has to be after cancellation of units dimensionless. So it's either in watts per watt or BTU hours per BTU hour, whatever it has to be. So if you say that the EER is equal to 9.5, it has the units BTU per hour divided by watt, and you want to convert that, you multiply by 1. Did it really change? No, but that 1 is going to cancel my units and make it truly dimensionless, which would then make it equal to the COP. So I put in here 0.293 watts divided by 1 BTU per hour. BTUs per hour go, the watts go. And now I have that the COP refrigeration is. It's roughly, if I had to round this number off to one significant digit, what would it be? 0.3, right? <laughs> you don't have a calculator today. Well, we're going to make math easy. 0.3 times 10. About three. Any number in here around three? Yeah, this one's a little higher, so maybe I have to refine it. Okay, I'm not. I'm gonna just give you another 30 seconds. All right, everybody in. So let's take a look. And congratulations. 2.8. True. Thumbs up. All right, very good. Let's go back and grade. Hey, 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 hey. But it proves you're learning. You're teachable. It, or it says I asked a bad question. So the question two was bad. All right. Let's press forward. You also have more commonly a seasonal energy efficiency ratio. Basically, they don't have a fixed warm outside they have it varying and so on a not so warm day it's actually the air conditioning system is pretty efficient it's it has a higher efficiency than on a really hot day okay so the they have it where you have a seasonal energy efficiency for split systems or things that you see in your house residential systems and typically the sear is much higher than the ear so anywhere 13 up to 20 21. So here is a, a central air conditioner. It's for cooling only. It doesn't have a heat pump combined cycle in it. It's just cooling only. And it has a split system, meaning there's an outdoor unit and an indoor unit. The outdoor unit's a condensing unit. Indoor unit's got the evaporator. And it, this is just a made up XYZ manufacturer with a certain model number. But here you can see the seasonal energy efficiency ratio is given to be around 13.3. All right. Well, this goes way back, but there's been a push, the federal government, of uh, mandating uh, minimum efficiencies in appliances, especially air conditioning systems. So uh, way back in 2016, they said you can't manufacture and sell uh, less than 13. Actually, they can't sell that. I mean, they can't stop you from manufacturing, but you can't sell it. All right. Then to be Energy Star qualified, it used to be you had to be 14 minimum, but then things changed. 05, the minimum sear went to 13. The window units were exempt, so they stayed around 10 on the ear. Uh, 2015, not that long ago, the split systems, meaning most residential and apartments, air conditioning systems, installed in the southeast region of the United States. Texas is part of the southeast region, so that's us. Uh, must have a minimum of a 14 sear. So maybe if you know somebody, your parents, or maybe yourself bought an air conditioning system in your house, it had to be a minimum of 14 sear. So those that stalled in all other states outside of the southeast and southwest regions uh, must continue to have a 13 sear. So if you're not in that, so Texas, Tennessee, Virginia, South Carolina, Oklahoma, even Hawaii they have a minimum of a 14 sear. What is better, to have an 18 sear or a, a 13 sear? Which one's better? All right, why is 18 better again? Because for the same amount, rate of cooling, you have less power input to the system. 
And so if you multiply this by a time period, then you would have the total amount of heat that was removed and the total amount of, let's say, electricity used. True? So the sear is inversely proportional to the amount of electricity used over the cooling season, over the summer, where you need cooling in your buildings. So now that we set that up, last year the electric bill needed to run the air conditioning system was $3,000. That $3,000 isn't for the lights, isn't for the stove, isn't for the hot water heater, only the air conditioning for the whole summer. Okay, was somehow you calculated to be 3,000. But it was SEER 13 and it finally went and died. So your salesman comes out and they say, you need to replace it and I can sell you an 18 SEER and that's gonna save you money. All right, if I, it's gonna save me money and I don't change my habits in my house. I don't say, yeehaw, I have a brand new system. I used to be satisfied having it 75. Now I'm going to be only satisfied having it 70. You know, you can't change that, right? And, you, and you're going to have the same equivalent summer, which some summers are really hot and some summers are really cool. So both of those things can affect your bill. But let's say it's equivalent summer and you have not change your heat, your pattern of, of the requiring cooling. What is the estimated new bill if you installed the 18 sear? And I'm gonna give you a little more time. All right, so where everybody's in. So the, so basically we, it's the same equation. So if the Q load for the whole winter is the same, then the amount of electricity you have to purchase for the same not did I say winter it's summer amount of cooling needed over the whole summer would be the sear divided by or the, the amount divided by the sear and so we said this is the same and so the amount for if you purchased the 18 compared to the electric bill when you had the 13 would be if you had the same QL, let me try and draw it like this, maybe put it over here, SEER, eh. here, multiply by SEER, okay, this is now the same, so I can write this equation, uh, the same thing, the summer with the 13 SEER has the same as the summer with the 18 SEER, the summer with the um, 13 sear would be how much I had to purchase for that summer on the 13 sear times the sear 13, which is just simply 13, the number 13. Uh, it, this one would be 18 times the sear 18. So the amount of electricity I have to purchase when it's the higher efficiency, well, how much did I have to purchase and pay for when it was 13 times the 13 divided by the 18. Is that what you used? And what number did you get? Uh, 2170. You got 2170? Well, let's see about your friends. Look reasonable? So those that were over here, were that lack of calculator? Or was just getting too sophisticated? Okay, let's press forward.